This video is a basic introduction to signifying religion, a theoretical framework for understanding a deceptively simple term. I'll be building off of ideas in Paul Myrie's first chapter to his edited volume, Introduction of Religious Studies, from Anselm Academic Press. Like many textbooks, Paul Myrie introduces us to the study of religion by way of definitions. He has us ask, what is religion? Now you can find a lot of different definitions just as you can undoubtedly tease out some of their difficulties. And rather than defining religion in this class, we're going to describe religion so far as the term refers to observable human activity. From your study of history, you know this activity covers a lot of subtle and not so subtle expressions, but these expressions say something about the humans involved. Myrie uses the phrase core values to get at this. Furthermore, the expressions involved in religion have effects, good, bad, ugly, depending on who you ask. We call expression with effect discourse. So when we describe religion, we're interested in a human activity whose reflection of core values has some discursive power or significance. You might be asking, well, why is religion so significant? Or why not call this thing something else? And the answer is yes. In fact, people of all sorts have used different names for this very process of meaning-making, but as Jonathan Z. Smith tells us, there's a long history of people using this term religion to label what and who they deem is noteworthy. Our task is to notice what's going on with this and how it works. That means our descriptions of these instances need to be a bit more nuanced. When we observe religion happening, we're really talking about signifiers, or people, taking signs, symbols, things that point your attention elsewhere, and making and people making those things significant. Their confessions of what is meaningful is really a complex process of filling signs with meaning, and we call that confessional signifying. Expressions of how these things are or should be would be examples of this. Of course, for us to notice that these, express these are expressions in the first place, they have to have some effect. This is what doing religion looks like. When we attempt to explain how this works, we too are signifying religion. We're critically signifying. We use our intellectual methods and theories to say, hey, there's something to learn about the human here. And we're not just going to learn about the particular discourse of these confessional signifiers. We can learn about the core of human beings, homo religiosus, the human who does religion. And for the scholar of religion, that's critically significant. So when you think religion, you know that this is an opportunity to describe what confessional signifiers are doing and to explain what that says more broadly about human beings. Should you be asked to say something insightful about religion, say for a class or just in everyday life, thinking, think about making a thesis-driven argument. First things first. Get curious about the topic of religion and some issue. Ask how it plays out in a specific example. We would call this the confessional signifying right. Then use one of your critical tools to examine the confessional signifying. And ask yourself what your study signifies about how human religion, or how human activity, which we call religion, works. That analysis is what we call religious studies. And in our class, we can call that signifying religion.